Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Drive for Odds Checker. I am Jeff Feinberg. With me is Andy Lack. Andy, Tiger Week. It's Riviera. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, man. I love this tournament. Uh, I could throw a stone and and hit Riviera from where I'm sitting right now. It's it's oh. my favorite non-major of the year. Uh, I go to this tournament every year. I'm going again this year. Uh, you know, cheat code at this tournament, Jeff, like you can see so many golf shots and so many awesome golfers. If you just commit to not w caring about seeing tiger, um, because like the tiger crowds this week are always insane, but then you could just follow like Ludwig for 18 holes with no fans. Um, so I'm excited to watch this week. I spoiler alert, I will not be betting on Tiger. Uh, so I will probably be following the guys that I play some of my own hard earned money on this week, uh, which we can get into very shortly now here. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a plus EV move to sort of find your way to the other side of the golf course with those elite groups or Tigers. not. I mean, it's always nice to get a glimpse or two of the big cat, but uh, opportunity definitely with the stack field. You, as you mentioned, very familiar with Riviera. Uh, you're familiar with a lot of PGA layouts, maybe none more than this one on the regular rotation, Andy. So talk us through it. Everyone knows there's a bit of a funny or or just elite level correlation to the Masters. Uh, the big sure. boys seem to reign here. We have seen elite ball strikers take over, long irons. Uh, that's my cold notes, but you fill in the gaps for everyone. Yeah, I think if we continue on with the 100 plus trend uh, in golf at Riviera of all places, I'll quit. Uh, I, I, I think I would probably have to do the same because as you alluded to, uh, this is a golf course that generally separates the men from the boys. Um, this golf course really favors now power off the tee with the softer conditions and the ability for all of these guys to cut a lot of these corners of the dog legs that they weren't able to back in the day. Um, it has got a really low greens and regulation percent. It's got a really low driving accuracy percentage. It's got some of the toughest greens to put on, on the entire PGA tour. Uh, so a very complete test of golf. This is like, Rory's favorite course on the PGA tour. This is Patrick Cantlay's favorite course on the PGA tour. I keep going back to the quote about like this golf course doesn't have any, this is a Cantlay quote. This golf course doesn't really have any tricks. Um, it's not sneaky in any way, shape or form. There's no water on it, but it still finds a way to test golfers year after year um, based on the, just the total T to green package that this golf course lays out. You got to have a great short game. You got to have some pop off the tee. You got to be a great middle to long iron player, and you got to have some experience on these Poe greens. So um, we can use this to dovetail us and talking into the top of the board, Jeff, but man, I mean, I don't know how many times this has to happen, but I, I'm sticking to my guns with a pretty top heavy card here again. And uh, hope, hopefully something changes here, man. Yeah, a lot of golf betters. I've probably used the joke before this season already, but it's like we are rats in a cage. It's electrified. There's a piece of cheese on the outside. We keep trying to get that piece of cheese. We keep getting shocked backwards. Um, so let's do it. Top of the board, Scotty Scheffler, plus 750, high, high mark number over at Bet365 using that odds checker grid. I know a guy that Andy has always had an affinity for at Riviera. It's, he feels like he's got to win one of these. It would be Rory McIlroy, uh, 10 to 1. Victor Hovland with that total game prowess over at 14. Xander, 16. Uh, Justin Thomas started the day with much bigger numbers. I was not a part of them. I did look at them, but he is now down to 18 on this grid as low as 14. Patrick Cantley, I am seeing <clears throat> hitting uh, 18s, even some 20s, Morikawa 20, Max Homa 20. Uh, geez, I don't know. Should I stop? Should I keep going? What do you think I should do? We're going to add Ludwig. Add, in because, add Ludwig into that mix. Because I, I have, think... I'll just get it out of the way. We're going top. I've bet, I've bet your guy, Patrick Cantley. I've bet my guy, Ludwig. Uh, I'm swinging here, Andy. Let's go. 
Yeah. Um, man, I thought that we would get a little bit of a discount on like one of these guys, right, Jeff? How are we still in a universe where Rory can be 10 to one, Scotty can be six to one, and they can still give us five other guys under 20? Like, I, I don't understand. With all the long that... shots hitting. Yeah, I don't know. They're they're big in our world, buddy. Yeah, unbelievable. Anyway, uh, I was a part of the JT-22, um, okay, and I saw as high as 25. That was the first. I made two bets this morning early. Um, uh, we can get into the, the second one a little bit later, and, and I have some room. And, and the room that I have, I am circling heavily around your guy, Ludwig, I don't think either of us wants to claim Patrick Cantlay, even though we probably bet him more than others do. And my guy that I increasingly don't want to claim either, but we both seem to bet more than others do as well. And Xander Shoffley, like those Cantlay Ludwig Xander is kind of who I'm swinging around to pair with Justin Thomas. Um, but I, you know, I think the case for JT is simple. I bet him last week at 10 to one uh, or 11 to one. Now he goes to a golf course where he has immaculate course history. And, you know, he looked, he showed me enough in Phoenix. Like he, he looked, if you liked JT last week in Phoenix, there would be no reason for you not to like him this week at Riviera at, at double the price tag. He loves this golf course. You know, he always seems to show up when tiger is in the field. How did JT really start getting back on track this season top five at the hero world challenge playing alongside tiger i don't know if he will be paid with paired with tiger this week i do not care either but i i just think this is such a immaculate fit for jt's game and god of all these guys jeff you have to imagine that the one that's itching for his reannouncement into the golf world i don't think he's won a golf tournament since um southern hills uh jeff and he's playing the best golf that he has and in the last two years. And I, I, I thought it was either going to be this week or Phoenix that he gets off the schneid. So just because it didn't work out for me in Phoenix, I, I got to hang on for one more week at what I thought was a pretty good number. Like why I love Xander to death, Jeff. Why, why are these, you know, J, JT, you know, I, I don't understand. I, I know it got hit down to 18, but I was, I got to admit, I was pretty surprised to see JT 22 and Xander 14. Did that surprise you as well? A little bit. Um, to be honest, like Xander was probably so low, I just looked right through him off the mm -hmm. top. But I think we could see maybe, like we've already seen, because the, the top didn't probably get hit today much, so we could might see some drift. Uh, I think we've already started to see it later in the day with like a Cantley, as people didn't bet them because they were betting Justin Thomas or or other people. Andy, I'll, full disclosure, like, I'll just come out and say it. I pretty much got a full card. Like, I'm done. That's rarely when we chat on a Monday that I'm done. I don't think I've got room, so I'll just lay it out for you. I've bet, I've bet Ludwig at 23. I've bet Patrick Cantley at 20. The first bet I made this morning when I woke up, I didn't believe it to be real, but I promise you it was, was Sam Burns at three at, at 35 on bet 365, uh, he's now down to 25. I bet Burns at the Amex. I bet Burns last week. I am not bailing on Burns. And I bet Cam Young at 40. So I've got four guys. I don't really have much wiggle room unless I want to overexpose myself. So th that is my card. And I thought long and hard about Tony Finau and Sahith Tagala. But th that that is my card, Andy. I, I am done. We can take this any direction you want. Um. Okay, so... <laughs> The Burns 35, I'm so jealous of that. Like that, that is a wild number to me. I see him now in the yeah, I mean, we're I don't even at, feel I feel he, weird he, talking about he's it now 20 because 20 to one on DraftKings. Yeah, I honestly, honestly, and I'll probably when I post my card, I'll probably have to put the screen grab of it because I, I know uh there's some other people that had it or pulled it this morning as well. So I'm not alone on it. But I almost feel like I can't even debate the the number in the context of where it is now in relation to who else is around him. Right. Like, and it just feels like it's a totally different golf bet. So I almost feel uncomfortable bringing it up here in the context of where the number is now. But in full disclosure, that's that's my best. Sure. Sure. It was kind of a sleepy morning for me uh, after, after a very a long just... night. Very bad. So I did not. The game did not treat me well. So we're on to the next.
Right, right. I was big on the 49ers, as you know, as uh, as you know quite well. But um, just to add a couple names to the mix, I, I really like your – did you say Cameron Young? Did you hit the Cameron Young? Yeah, too? I hit Cameron Young. Uh, I hit Cameron Young. I thought about Adam Scott. I thought about Finau, but I hit Cameron Young. Okay, I was a little surprised – the name that I thought was going to come out of your mouth was well, I thought you would have been uh, sure. I thought I was going to um, expect Will Zalatoris 55 for you over Cam Young. Um, but you went in the Cam Young direction. I think I'm leaning in that direction too, because it just feels to me like this is such a good course fit for Zalatoris. Um, he's starting to play better golf, but is he ready to win? this event yet that is my question yeah that would probably have been where my headspace is at like i love will i think it's probably gonna come i don't know that it's coming right now this week right as for cam young like i get it it's almost like the tv broadcasts have treated him like an afterthought compared to like a year and a half ago where mm -hmm. you know they really were not they were using any chance to give him his tv time when he was in the race but I thought the numbers in the short field today were, were more than adequate fare with the form. I know Pebble didn't go well for him, but he played great in the desert in the Middle East. He played quite well last week. I just know this guy is going to find a way to screw up the easy par fives at Riviera, but um, that comes with the territory, I guess. Yeah. Um, speaking of is sure to screw up the easy par fives and probably screw up many other things for me. I bet Matt Fitzpatrick at 40 to one. Uh, I love this golf course for Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Fitzpatrick's finished top five here. I, I love this Southern Hills corollary, um, right? Which, you know, you look at the top five at Southern Hills and it's JT Fitzpatrick, Cam Young, Zalatoris, even Mito Pereira was great at Riviera before he, you know, went to live. Um, it, just from an architectural nerdy standpoint, like uh, the design philosophy with the Maxwell greens to the Thomas greens, the golden age arc, golden age arc, golden age architecture cannot speak this morning, Jeff fourth podcast of the day. Um, but I, I just love Matt Fitzpatrick on these types of tracks when it's a little bit different, difficult when there's a lower greens and regulation percentage, um, his short game, I think, is really going to shine on this golf course. I think his Poe putting, his putting inside 15 feet. So um, I think that's like a good pivot in terms of, you know, if we're talking daily fantasy and stuff, you're going to hear a lot of chatter about the big dogs. Like, I think people may be sleeping a little bit on Matt Fitzpatrick this week. Good in Phoenix last week, too. Like, he was really good. I think if you got all four days of, uh, you know, the Thursday conditions that we got in Phoenix, like Shane Lowry and Matt Fitzpatrick are probably battling out to win that tournament, right? Uh, probably. Um, I bet Matthew Fitzpatrick last week. So I'm in on Fitz for, for like, now you got my head spinning. Like if I can maybe yeah. find room, because there's nothing worse than being like a week early on a guy and, and you've so made a lot of great points as it way as better. This is a way better golf course for him than last week. So yeah, you no, know, that, I would that say does make a, a ton of sense. There are a lot of other like really popular names. I just want to pick your brain on that. Okay. I know people are probably considering choose your own adventure to discuss any of Scott Sahith. He now, uh, you know, Fee now, it's like I want to bet him, but it's a really bad logic. The logic being, I do believe at some point in his life he does win at Riviera. Or I did believe that two or three years ago. So should I keep myself beholden to it? So he, you know, why leave him in the California swing? And Scott, he loves it here. I saw some great signs last week, but do you trust him to win the number? Yeah, I think Scott's going to play very well and finish maybe T7. I, I just don't think I could get there from a bet to win standpoint as it stands here on on Monday afternoon, I guess. Uh, Sahith as well. I mean, I, I think this is a guy that's proven himself as a legitimate uh, California POA baseline razor obviously he went to school at uh pepperdine which is about 20 minutes away from riviera i would imagine that he has some experience on this golf course outside of what we've seen on the pga tour which has already been strong so i you know i like all those names fitzpatrick was the one that i went to i think 
to complete my card, like I said, I'm I'm probably swimming closer to the top in that Ludwig can't lay Xander zone. Um, but then as we get a little bit farther, like, man, Jeff, I, I just don't see this continuing another week with these a hundred plus winners, particularly at this golf course. But I think if we don't talk about some of them, we're, um, we're kind of spitting in the face of what we've seen the last couple of weeks. Sometimes I'm always willing to spit in the face of it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, anything eight fifty to a hundred just before we get there, probably, probably a decky, right? Yeah. Probably. That number seems so high. Maybe he's worth taking the swing at. I've seen like Corey Connors. I know I mentioned him a lot, so you could ignore me, but you know, he's flirting with 80, a hundred to one. Okay. So let's cross a hundred here. Andy Luke list, you know, he's won at Tory pines. He's North of a hundred, 125 to one. You've mentioned the driver dominance, a guy like Taylor Moore. You'd think his game could suit a place like this quite well. It's really hard for me to like name names back here. That's really uh, all I might have for you. Yeah. Uh, I like Svensson at 150. I don't think he could win. Gosh, man, what's the state of the union on Ricky? Like he just, he what? Like he's not passing the eye test to me at all right now. Like obviously the numbers are bad, but I was stupid enough to play some money on him, not in the outright market, but in daily fantasy at low ownership. And I, I, he's just missing, he's missing greens by like 30 yards on some of these and driving it in the desert all the time. I hope that he's not cooked again, but God, how the mighty have fallen. Like he's 150 to one now. Yeah. So last year, even before the win, what was so lovely was just the consistency, right? As yeah. a big Ricky fan, you know, you know, just as a Ricky fan, like you would see it and you would watch, you'd get a lot of TV time and you would see the days, Andy, you'd probably be able to pick it up better than I, cause you just got a better eye for intricacies of golf, but you'd see like Ricky doesn't have his a game or his B game today, but he can like hold the line. He yeah. is not able to hold any sort of line right now when he doesn't have something close to his stuff. Um, yeah. So it's a little concerning, Maybe he just had a great year, had a great holidays, and and he's going to ramp that engine up a bit. But we're excited. To see, like, we're so happy that he got his ticket back to the Masters. I'm not saying he's going to win it, so it would be a shame for him to, like, not find that form, I guess, as we hit Florida. Palm Beach is coming up. Maybe he'll show mm -hmm. up. Maybe he'll do it. Um, okay, final question for you before we get out of here. What is the best if you want to bet – tiger at this event Oy. like what's the best way to do that okay if you're like going if you're in la and you want to go check out some tiger for a couple who would you take in the head-to-head -head, tiger or fowler fowler that was probably too easy who would you take in a head-to-head -head, tiger or luke list luke list but jeff i'm a data guy so like my I run this tournament a thousand times and tiger has the lowest floor out of any player in this field. The only guy that I would favor him in a matchup over is chase Johnson. Okay. Now, does that mean that it's out of the realm of possibility that tiger can play well? Absolutely not. Like I think there's a couple of universes, a couple of simulations where tiger finishes top 20 in this event, right? Top 10 in this event. Maybe but you don't think I he's just... going to make this. It's a 30 man cut, right? We'll go from 80 to 50. You're not expecting him to play the weekend. Then. It wouldn't surprise me, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it. I, I like I, if you got think... plus money on him to miss the cut, you would take it. Yeah. Probably. I wouldn't do that because I love him too much. Yeah, you're and not I, looking I want to pick him to on. You're not betting cut. enough. You're yeah, not looking to like cheer against him. You're not. Yeah, you I want him to that. make the cut. Yeah, but, yeah of course. But, of course. But I I would say he has, you know, a, a very wide range of outcomes. So now that we're here and we've probably been a long time, I think it's just worth noting as it pertains to Tiger. And if he plays well, that's not a shock. And we all just want to see him like play well enough so we could believe that there's better golf to come this year, which is always fun. It's going to be a big week for him, right? He's unveiling the bit of the new brand since the departure from Nike. He's going to have to get to the microphone, Andy, and a lot of golf fans at the moment are blaming him for breaking what people thought was, uh, at least for this time, was the merger potentially. Um, and he went, which kind of spearheaded this public equity money. So 
you know, not like Tiger's not used to being the center of attention, but before his first golf event, he always talks about how it doesn't matter how much money he's playing a buddy for, he can't replicate game reps. Like he ignored, like there's no money that can get Tiger to replicate game reps. So he's been without game reps and the circus will be there. Yeah. Well, I certainly hope he makes the weekend just, um, just for like the city of Los Angeles in this tournament. And it's not even like a live PGA tour thing. It's like, if you're not tiger being relevant is just good for all parties involved. Okay. Like, I mean, it's just tiger is still the only guy that can capture this very niche sport that people, including the people that play it professionally seem to forget is a very niche sport. Yeah. Um, Tiger remains the only guy in the world that can put us on the map. Okay. And so I don't know how many times we're going to see him again, Jeff. I don't know how many times we're going to see him this season. Um, and I'm going to cherish it. Right. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I hope he plays well. I hope he surprises some, and, uh, I hope we get a great week of golf just in general, man. This is the first first week where football is no more football. Like this is our, this is our show. NBA hasn't really kicked into full gear yet. College basketball isn't really there yet. Like let's do it Riviera. Let's like, like show us what you got. Like, let's get a, let's get a big time winner and, and let's have some fun. If you are interested in Tiger, you probably didn't find much of what we said productive, but 175 to one, the high water mark on the odds checker grid over at Bet365 coming in as low as 100. So if you need the miracle, you may as well get paid uh, top of the line. For Andy, I'm Jeff. We're hoping for a great Sunday finish at Riviera. That includes a winner. We'll be back next week, Mexico.